having some problems. Don't feel too bad. They're the same problems that most people have. Let's see if I can help you find them, such that you may address them, if you like. By far, your largest problem is you don't seem to understand what science is, and yes, I realize I'm saying that to a scientist, which is exactly why it's your largest. In science, you don't. Um, you have uh, the idea of a magisterium, the expert opinion, the orthodox view. This is the part you don't seem to get. There is a difference between what scientists and group of scientists do and science itself. Science itself is an idea. You're blaming mathematics for mistakes that are common among mathematicians. Science is a method, an idea about a method of understanding the world around us. It is an important method, and you can see it here. The four basic steps here are you make an observation that describes a problem, create a hypothesis, test that hypothesis, draw conclusions, and refine the hypothesis. The major precepts of the scientific method employed by all scientific disciplines are verifiability, predictability, falsifiability, and fairness. Let's see if we can't get ahead of you a bit here by talking briefly about materialism. Materialism is the view that all facts are causally dependent upon physical processes, or even reducible to them. I may add environmental and chemical processes here, or perhaps it's implied. I'm not really sure. I think labels are mainly harmful to conversations, although I do understand their convenience. To date, all that we know has been shown via this understanding, using the scientific method. Using science has corrected every wrong idea that humans have ever corrected, no other method, not popular opinion, nor personal feelings, nor divine inspiration, has ever corrected a scientific error. When Rupert mentions materialism, he might as well be saying science. As he notes, science assumes materialism. So if materialism is wrong or incomplete, then science is wrong or incomplete. Great! Let's fix or complete it. If you have another method, Rupert, explain it, please. And then, when you can reliably demonstrate yours, we will also consider it. If it turns out to be a reliable method, awesome! Until then, donkeys can fly. With that out of the way, let's look at some examples he brings up. The idea that science can solve all the problems of the world, and also in a kind of religious sense, where science becomes a religion, then it's humanity's salvation. The scientists are the saviors of the world. Um, it's a kind of messianic in its extreme forms, a kind of messianic salvation cult. Maybe science can solve all the world's problems. And maybe it can't. I'm not sure. How is it that you are so sure? But it doesn't really matter. If you think that the scientific method cannot solve some problems, you would need to come up with a new system we can trust to be reliable that can find truth or perhaps solve problems that science can't. What is the method you're suggesting? Now, before we go too far in me showing you how wrong you are, let's find a point of agreement. Do some people treat science as a type of religion? Yes, some people do. But whereas you seem to define this as scientism, I would define it as anti-science. Science, as we've already mentioned, is a methodology that is entirely against people treating it in such a way. As I mentioned, if you know of a better method to get to truth, I'm all... Mask. Furthermore, it would surely grant you world renown and a bunch of cash. I'm rooting for you, my friend. As for me, uh, I like medicine. I'm a fan of technology and mango-flavored lip balm. What can I say? I haven't seen this as a new phenomenon. I mean, the scientific world has always um, had a culture of pushing down dissenting ideas. Um, it's not pluralistic. I mean, most worlds, political worlds, religious worlds, um, uh, sports worlds, most worlds are pluralistic. You seem to have problems with the concept of peer review or moreover epistemology. If we start by believing claims, we would believe all sorts of ridiculous things. No, the proper way, if you're interested in being rational, is to wait for the evidence. And if it comes and is sufficient, we then get to call ourselves rational for believing the claim. You go on to say that most worlds are pluralistic, and give several good examples of that. 
Let me give you some examples that aren't. Arsenic is bad for people to ingest. Humans require oxygen to breathe. This might be the world of medicine or biology if you prefer, or both. The earth has an atmosphere. Gravity is a real force. There isn't pluralism in science because it deals with facts, Rupert. So, yes, there are some examples of things people differ on. We might go ahead and call these opinions. Held beliefs that are not based on objective fact. Religion, sports, or the musical band someone prefers. And there are some things people, at least shouldn't, differ on. We might go ahead and call these facts. The earth revolves around the sun. The water cycle. <laughs> How babies are created. The question you need to ask yourself is where should a search for truth lie? In the opinion column of things or in the facts column? You don't get to have your own facts, Ben. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Rupert. You certainly get to have your own ideas, but until you prove them or give good evidence for them, I get to have my own ideas too. And my idea is that the cotton candy farting unicorns that orbit your head are giving you some problems. To mention the word telepathy, if you mention the word telepathy, most people think, oh, yeah, I've had telepathic experiences or, you know, I know who's phoning before I pick up the phone or look at the caller ID or, you know, that happened with me. Or most people or they say, well, I don't know if there's any evidence for it or not. But people who are true believers in scientism get incredibly irrational and often angry at the mention of this word um, and deny there's any evidence for it, usually in complete ignorance. Again, yes, there are people that don't understand what science is. Far too many of them. In case you need yet another example, stand yourself in front of a mirror and recite the magic words. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Which fool doesn't understand what science is at all? You mentioned the litmus test by saying the word telepathy. The reaction of a person will tell you if they are anti-science or, as you prefer, into scientism or whatnot. Or not. You're dead wrong here. First, I would consider people who think that they knew who was calling before picking up the phone was an example of telepathy would fall directly into the category of anti-science. The problem is you don't. Prove it, then we'll all agree. There is such a thing as coincidence, too, you know. Secondly, we do not start by believing your or anyone's babble. We rather start by disbelieving claims, and then by asking for evidence. As we start believing more things in our lives, we notice some new claims fit into those existing ideas, and some do not. Always with the examples. I have a belief that the Earth is basically a sphere. If someone tells me it is basically a sphere, we can move on with the conversation, no problem. Their claim fits into my worldview. Now, if someone were to make the claim that the Earth is cone-shaped, I would need them to provide evidence of that to change my mind. In this case, it would need to be some pretty good evidence, as the evidence showing it's sphere-like is quite impressive. If that person were to whine that I was being irrational, I think I would smack him upside the head with the definition of rational. Let's take Johnny, who is an idiot. In a conversation, you mentioned telepathy to Johnny. He responds with, Wow, that is so awesome. I didn't know it was real. You and Johnny go on your merry ways, believing in something that could be false. Take the opposite example. Susie, who is not an idiot, engages you in conversation where you mention telepathy. She thinks about her past, all she has learned in her life, and decides that she has not yet been given enough evidence to believe the claim is true. She challenges you on that claim. Now it is your turn to show her, with good evidence, whatever your claim is, is actually true. Now, telepathy is one thing. If you're trying to use card-guessing tricks... I don't think that's enough evidence to convince people of their understanding of telepathy. Perhaps more specific terminology. Um, maybe more study is needed. This is how science works, Rupert. And this is how it should work. If you are butthurt because people may laugh at your ideas, perhaps the problem is with your ideas. If you were to use some good methodologies and sample sizes, if your experiments could be well repeated, then all those who actually understand science would begin to see your claim as true. You need to prove your claim. If the point here is that people get irrational instead of honestly opposing the claim in a search for truth, hit like and subscribe, buddy! 
There are a lot of rational people, ideas, and conversations going on out there. Well, <laughs> kind of like this one. It's kind of like what I do. You know what I'm saying? But scientism is the uh, belief that the scientific worldview, by which they usually mean the materialist worldview, uh, is the only valid way of looking at reality. Look, I'll ask again. If you know of or can create a reliable method of discovering truth, let's hear it. Do it for the fame. Do it for the money. Do it to present science with uh, the middle finger. Do it for any damn reason you like. Just do it. Until we have a reliable method other than science, you're just fantasizing about being shown to be correct. Uh, the problems I have with scientism are much more to do with generic prejudices uh, which hold back research in areas that don't fit to, with a narrow materialist ideology. Yes, prejudices do hold back areas of investigation in the mainstream. Don't even get me started on money and grants and science. That's a whole other discussion. But these prejudices holding back areas of study aren't strictly bad things. Why aren't there more people studying the effects of climate change on a flat earth? Indeed, who is studying the mating habits of the West Saharan Sasquatch? In both these cases, I personally would think this to be a waste of time. However, you can study any damn thing you like. You just don't get to cry about others not accepting these things until you show evidence. You talk a lot about evidence, Rupert. Don't worry, I'll do the work for you. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of interest in these areas, Rupert. Uh, it's quite easy to find your work and the critics of it. If I've missed something important, please point it out. Leave a link. <laughs> yeah, like anyone will ever watch some stupid dude in a wrestler's mask. But leave a link! I love to learn new things, and we can only learn when we're either ignorant or wrong. I love learning, so hopefully I'm not too ignorant. And I love being wrong, because that's when I always learn something. Uh, the, the science delusion is the belief that science already understands the nature of reality in principle, leaving any of the details to be filled in. And that understanding includes a number of dogmas or assumptions, which are nature's mechanical, matter's unconscious, uh, the mind is nothing but the brain, mechanistic medicine is the only kind that really works, uh, the laws of nature are fixed. That science already understands the nature of reality in principle. Who is saying this? All right, so people who are anti-science or ignorant to it? Sure, fair enough. Science is a method by which we can investigate the world around us, Rupert. We're engaged in that process. We're learning, we're creating new methods, we're improving as we can, I guess. If we were done, there wouldn't really be much of a need for scientists. If you have some extra piece of reality uh, outside of science to show us, be my guest. Make a claim and provide evidence. Rupert goes on to mention commonly held ideas that do exist in science. Listen closely, Rupert. This is really important. If you were to show one of those examples incorrect in one area and provide evidence, the scientific community, at least those that understand what science is, would start to listen to you. Me too. Is that I think the mind stretches beyond the brain um, through fields, just as the activity of a magnet stretches beyond the surface of the actual iron bar that's the magnet. And the field of the Earth, the gravitational field of the Earth, stretches invisibly far into space and keeps the moon in its orbit. And I think our minds have fields. And. Um, <laughs> wow, really? Well, when you give some evidence, I'll listen to that. But until that moment, donkeys can fly! What? You don't believe me? Well, Rupert doesn't tolerate dissent. I mean, if you look at a whole range of phenomena, like the sense of being stared at, uh, telephone telepathy, um, dogs that know when their owners are coming home. Some of these things can be reasonably well explained by what we already know. But if you have differing ideas, here we go again, Tiger. Test them, get some evidence, present that evidence. When the evidence is good enough to support the claim, you did it, Rupert! This is how we change our beliefs, and the beliefs of others. I think I'm going to start calling you Captain Claim. We can all make claims, Rupert. You're supposed to be a scientist. Can you back up your hypotheses with tests and evidence? Of course not. 
And that is why we see you attacking the scientific method, right? People don't agree with you because science is bad. Now, look, I could be mistaken, but that kind of really seems to be what I'm hearing in this interview. But as I say, these issues are a litmus paper test for believers in scientism and materialism because they'll immediately get terribly emotional about these things and say it's rubbish. Well, you're half right. It is rubbish until you have evidence to back it up. I understand you have published papers, but apparently they aren't enough evidence for what you're trying to prove. So get to work, son. I won't get all emotional, though. You aren't that cute or important. Just like most others out there, you seem to be someone who thinks they should be listened to, but has no idea how to make an argument, or what a sound epistemology looks like. Hell, I'd be willing to bet most don't even know the word. Scientists have been studying the effects of spiritual practices, like meditation, and these have measurable effects. You know, it affects blood pressure, it affects stress levels, it affects it helps insomnia, helps prevent depression. Um, and the benefits of spiritual practices are now very well established. Yes, scientists have been studying effects of these sorts of practices. And in many cases, they think they know why these effects are being seen. You seem to be suggesting some other cause. What is that cause, Rupert? And where is your evidence? Until you actually support a claim with evidence, you're unfortunately Captain Claim. Mentioning claims alone doesn't advance the conversation. Pick an example, explain your hypothesis, show us your test, and explain how materialism can't get to that same new understanding. Or if you don't want the fame, tell me. I'd happily take the fame, money, renown, buy a new mask. I think the interpretation of the effects depends on your worldview. Um, meditation in its Buddhist, Hindu, and Christian contemplative contexts is about contacting the ground of consciousness itself, which is the divine ground of the universe within those religious. Yes, every interpretation is based on the beliefs held by the one doing the interpretation. That's sort of definitional, Rupert. But why should anyone else care? Well, if I said, I feel that the spirit of my tuna can wants me to do good in the world, you might be happy that I want to do good in the world but deeply concerned about my reasons for wanting to do so. So much, in fact, that you probably wouldn't trust me with your sandwich. Yes, I do. I mean, I went through a, a Dawkins-type atheist phase that lasted at least 10, 15 years when I was at school and doing research at Cambridge. But I was drawn back to a more religious view, partly through psychedelic experience, partly through traveling in India, partly through taking up meditation, uh, and yoga. I think I'm just going to leave the definition of irrational here. Going from a position of there is not enough evidence, if it indeed was a Dawkins type atheist phase, to a position of believing, due to using drugs and sitting and staying in weird positions and taking a holiday, falls squarely under the definition, I would think. I didn't believe the earth was flat. Then I ate a chocolate bar. I sat under a tree, slipped into the splits, then jumped in a lake. Yep. Earth must be flat. I certainly don't claim that only this religious Christian and specifically Anglican framework is valid. I, don't, I think that all religions are paths to God. All religions are a path to God. Are you serious? As you are Christian, you believe in one God that some think is or are magically three gods. Kind of like a three cheese pizza, perhaps. At any rate, you must be aware that some religions have many, many more gods. How can some religions point to one God, some to three-ish, some to hundreds, and yet all of them be a path to God? They are mutually contradictory on many, many levels. Number of arbiters not least of which. Perhaps you don't agree with the three laws of logic. A equals A, A does not equal not A, and everything is either A or not A. You know, identity, non-contradiction, and excluded middle. Ah, maybe we found it. Perhaps Rupert doesn't understand basic fundamental logic. In terms of scientific conversations and conferences, um, I've been having many conversations with scientific colleagues on Zoom 
and spoken at quite a few scientific conferences. What? You've been in quite a few scientific conferences, in person and on video chat apps. But science doesn't tolerate dissent. No one listens to your crazy ideas. The prejudices that exist in the scientific community don't allow for important areas to be investigated. Then why were you invited to these conferences? Maybe I'll just be quiet and watch you dismantle your own words here. I'm... And I asked him what the perfect number of that would be, and he said 0% is the dream target of religious people. He would prefer a world with no religious people in it. Uh, I just wondered what your thoughts were about that. Would, would you take issue with that? Well, first of all, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen? What? A world with no religious people? You really aren't very good at logic, or maybe it's just a failure of imagination. What if everyone died? Boom! No religious people. What if we learn everything there is to know about abiogenesis? Well, as Max Planck said, a new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it. So I suppose it would take a generation or two after that. Or what if people started to learn about epistemology? What if everyone knew the equivalent in epistemology to, say, multiplication in math? I would wager that would be enough to rid the world of most irrational beliefs. No, you're probably right. Looking around and listening to you makes me think that maybe the world will never be rational at all. Touché, sir. Your ignorance has won this round. The militant atheism actually is a sort of branch of Christianity in a weird way, that the, the kind of evangelical nature of it um, and the sense of uh, rightness and the, the need to convert people who haven't yet seen the light actually is a direct inheritance from... This is a terrible analogy. Look, I understand it's a question, and you are a great interviewer. Not that you have much competition, but while I'm here, yes, some in both groups, atheists and theists, try to convert others to their way of thinking. Not all do. You know who else tries to change minds of others? Teachers, doctors, politicians, lawyers, journalists, parents, friends, neighbors, and on and on. So all of these are equivalent? If that is your claim, at least you're consistent. I'd say atheists who try to convert should, but certainly don't always, try to show why the reasons theists have for believing are weak. Theists, on the other hand, try to show others what to believe based on weak ideas. These are not equivalent. One is helping, the other is hurting. You guys can sort it out yourselves. Yes, I think evangelical atheism is a Christian heresy. Hey, look at that. We agree again. Atheism is Christian heresy. You know what else goes against the Bible? Equal rights for women. Equal rights for homosexuals. Eating shellfish. And do you know what isn't against the Bible, Rupert? Slavery, rape, torture, genocide, incest, and a host of others. Think I personally would choose the side of heresy on this one, Tiger. Everyone can pick biblical cherries. How many can look at the state of the tree? struggle for human rights, you know, trans rights, gender rights, and all this kind of thing, that's so much part of modern political discourse. Where does that come from? It comes from, I think, a secularized version of the Christian view that everyone's equal in the sight of God. <laughs> Everyone is equal in the sight of God. I'm just going to leave this here. Uh, the links can be found in the description. If you think the Bible teaches that everyone is equal in the sight of God, you need to start reading a little more of the Bible. As for where something comes from, your fallacy is post hoc ergo proctor hoc. Because Christianity came before atheism, in your view, so the idea of the second has to come from the former. As the fallacy points out, and as you seem to miss, there are other options here, which is why this is a fallacy. They could both have come from an earlier source, or they could have come from independent sources, which is the case here. Secular morality starts at zero and works its way up to ideas by logic and argumentation. This is philosophy. Divine morality starts at a book and works its way through the ages being changed by logic and argumentation. Or do you still stone your neighbor for garden work on the Sabbath? 
In fact, in many ways, Christianity is a victim of its own success. I mean, in the Middle Ages, Christians started universities, schools, hospitals, um, social welfare systems. You go on a lot about your religion. I thought we were talking about science. I suppose talk about whatever you like. You're talking about all the good things done by your religion in the past. I would ask you to consider the population makeup of people in terms of religion in the regions you're talking about at the time you're talking about. As the far majority of them were members of one faith, it's really not surprising in the least that members of that faith did great stuff. But if most were of that faith, it's not surprising in the least that they did the horrible stuff too. Without going into depth here, you may want to Google the Inquisition for starters. In the end, the good, the bad, it's irrelevant unless you can show that it's true. I'm sure I'll get something like, oh, you materialists and your materialistic religion of scientism. And Rupert, I'll accept all of that and gladly investigate your reliable method of finding truth. Present it. Give evidence for it. And stop being a whiny little child. Uh, I'm very, very interested in the underlying philosophies, and particularly the scientific issues behind Wow, wouldn't have guessed that, buddy. I might suggest studying the most underlying principle in science. The underlying principle of science! It's a method to search for truth, Rupert. It is fine if you don't like it, but you have to yet to present anything comparable. Study what you want, bud, but until you have some evidence to back up your claims, you're only telling us that donkeys can fly. Wonderful. I mean, if you look at a whole range of phenomena, like the sense of being stared at, uh, telephone telepathy, um, dogs that know when their owners are coming home. You're listing some spooky things here again, Rupert. Some we know a bit about and some we don't know much about. What are you saying about them? That we need to study more? Awesome, do it. That they refute a materialistic worldview? Slow down, Tiger. You have a lot of work ahead of you for that one. I can't say it enough. Do the work. Show the results. Stop whining that no one is taking you seriously. Be a serious scientist. Um, it is showing us, you know, some people have near-death experiences, which are kind of mystical insights that change their lives. Some people have great revelations through psychedelic experiences. And those are being studied scientifically as well, and also their health benefits in therapies of various kinds. So call me a scientism person like thing or whatever name you want to use. This is very simple. Science is a search for truth. It is a good method. So good that we've never found a better nor an equal. I don't know what science will discover, nor what it won't. How is it that you seem to know so much about what science can't discover, and yet are completely unable to offer evidence or even a straightforward claim? Look, Rupert, my old chap, I don't know if telepathy is possible. I don't know if telepathy is impossible. I don't know if humans will ever be able to do it, even if it is possible. And I don't know if everyone can do it now to some degree that we're unaware or even aware of. I do know that I have never experienced the kind of telepathic ideas that I've read about or seen in movies. You have all of your work ahead of you, and you've spent the past 30 minutes whining about not being taken seriously when you've been going to many scientific conferences and talking to your favorite imaginary friend, incorrectly I might add. Let me show you how this is done. Robert Sheldrake is a very irrational scientist. That, Roops, is called the claim. Evidence 1. He doesn't seem to appreciate the process of peer review. Evidence 2. He hasn't elaborated on any of his hypotheses, only briefly mentioning the brain fields that we create, for which there seems to be zero evidence that I can find at all. Evidence 3. He hasn't tested his hypotheses in a manner that other scientists yet find his ideas convincing. Evidence 4. He doesn't seem to be refining his hypotheses, but in his defense, it is hard to say, as he's offered very little tangible information in this interview at all. Evidence 5. He took some drugs, meditated, stretched, took a bit of a holiday, and this changed his opinion on the nature of the universe. 
evidence six. Dude is a scientist and can't separate what people, scientists or not, do and say from what the subject of science is. Good luck with your work, Rupert, and I will be the very first to congratulate you when you prove that dogs send out mental magnetic type waves which alert them to their owners coming home and allow them to tell their owners who is calling. Until then, donkeys can't fly. It's wonderful having ideas and testing them, but believing that they are true prior to having enough evidence is the literal definition of irrational.